Alright, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Acer Aspire model A515-51 series. Um, this, is, this one says model number N17C4. So first what you want to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Um, but yeah, once you do that, um, if you want to change the RAM, it's just under the store. So you just pop that up. The RAM pops out just like this. There's the two tabs. This little plastic's a little bit in the way, but move it out of the way, pull it aside, and there you go. So you can see the RAM is DDR4, um, 2133P, so PC4. This is a 4 gig stick. All right. There's only appears to be one slot so I don't know if there's probably another slot inside or um, the RAM might be soldered to the board all right so once you do that you want to take out the hard drive so pop up this one all right and then once you take out the four screws holding the hard drive in place um, you'll want to pull this up just like this it might be stuck if it is um, what you can do um, is kind of just work on it a little bit or use your fingernail or pry tool and try and pry up underneath the little metal tab over there okay if you have another screw for a hard drive or um, another screwdriver sometimes you can actually use this to kind of pull it up just like this just kind of pry it okay so when you do that be careful you have to remove the connector so I like to use my fingernail along this connector here and then kind of pull on it just pull on it while you're kind of pulling the hard drive and then you can remove the hard drive just like that all right once you do that you can actually pop the whole cover off so just open it up slightly um, let me see if I can show you so here you'll see there's like a little gap um, so you get your fingernail there or your pry tool and just go all the way around so you can just go like this once you get around once you get into part of it you can actually just pry all the way around it's not too tough on this model and then there's also a seam here on the back so just pop this all out um, it came out pretty easily on its own but once you get all of that up you can just remove the cover just like this um, there's one other thing this little um, cover has a battery reset button here so if something happens to your BIOS or something you can press and hold that with a little needle and then that should reset that okay then after that you want to remove the battery there's two screws holding the battery in at these corners here once you do that um, just peel up the tape for the battery and then use the two tabs and wiggle this piece out just like that once you do that you can use the tape or just kind of pull up on the battery and it'll come out at an angle um, there's some little legs that stick out here that go into these little slots to hold the battery down. So when you put it back, make sure you put it in at that angle. Okay. All right. So yeah, there's only one stick of RAM. It doesn't look like you can put another one. Then there's the CMOS battery here. If it goes bad, you can just pop this connector out. There's this little board here. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, I don't think there's anything. There's nothing on the other side. So I don't know. Maybe this is like some sensor um, then you got the two speakers they're both connected by a wire here that goes all the way around and it plugs in where's it going so speaker wires going here okay and it plugs right here underneath all this mess of cables then you got the wireless antennas here the white ones at the top the black ones on the bottom to pop these up just go as close to the end of the tail as you can and then pry it up and then to put it back you just push it back down don't try and pry from the front because you can damage it that way the wireless card there's one screw you undo it it'll pop up at an angle and then you can wiggle it out then you got the fan cable connector here um, the, CMO, the CPU and the GPU are both soldered to the board. Um, then you got the LCD cable. If you touch the LCD cable connector, like if you want to pull it out, make sure, unplug it, disconnect the battery, and hold the power button for about 30 seconds just to be safe. Um, and then you got the DC jack connector here. This style of DC jack is kind of bad. Um, I always see these get pushed in, so this one had to be glued in place. Um, the little tabs here actually got shoved in and then it broke the plastic here and the charge port wasn't holding down. Um, the USB and audio board are a separate piece, so if it gets damaged, you can actually replace it. Um, it's connected with this cable here. 
Um, and that looks like that's pretty much it. There's the keyboard connector here and then the um, uh, trackpad connector here, the touchpad. And I'm thinking this is probably for keyboard backlight. If you have a model with a keyboard backlight, that's what this, I think that's what that's for. Um, and then there's also an M.2 uh, SSD slot here. Um, I don't know if this supports uh, NVMe PCIe SSDs, but for sure it should support SATA. So if you wanted to try um, this, you'd probably have to look it up. I would recommend just getting a SSD from somewhere that you can return it if you wanted to try using a NVMe or PCIe SSD. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. Bye.